And uh, what else do I want to say? And today we have Christmas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, okay. Let's just start one. Ah, this is so. Then just hand it off to Christian. Okay. Just hand it off. Relax. You don't need to introduce Christian. Just hand it off to him. And then, yeah. Just look at him and then just, just hand it off to my brother here. Oh, my brother. It's okay. We're all just doing it. We're all just doing it. Yeah, no, no rules. And to my brother here or something yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. Whatever. All right. Let him do it. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm John. I've been a Christian most of my life. And I'm from California, but I'm actually here in Stuttgart, Germany, visiting my good brother in Christ, Christian. Hi. Yeah, I'm Christian. I'm living here in Germany, in Stuttgart. And uh, I got to know John many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. I think about 26. <laughs> it was pretty funny uh, those days. Um, and, well, we, we actually had this idea to do a podcast because... Um, I'm going to the U.S. regularly, and on my last flight, I had a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met another Christian, and we talked a lot about the return of Christ. And he showed me some videos of a, of a guy who brings up all kinds of prophecies, and it was really interesting. And I was like, wow, there's really a lot to it, and Christ is coming soon. Um, then I do ask him the question, are you actually ready for the return of Christ? So that has been going through my mind for a couple of weeks. And then a couple of weeks ago, John yeah. called me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I've been also thinking a lot about the second coming of Christ. Because right. in the U.S., we, I think we're just market saturated. Everybody's talking about signs of time, right? The peace right. treaty, the Abraham Accords. Lately, you've been seeing a lot streaming regarding the red heifer, and and then of course now the solar eclipse. There's so many signs at times being saturated in the U.S. market on YouTube and on any. I place. think the U.S. is really special. Right. I mean, here in Germany, when I mention the red heifers, people do not even know that they exist. <laughs> okay, I talk to my boss, and he reads his news every day, and he's all about it. I asked him, so do you know about red heifers? He said, no idea. Yeah. So that's why I think it's really good we're doing this, especially also in English. Yeah. Since uh, I feel in the U.S. you have a really special situation. Well, but it's, it's special. But you know what? The most unique thing I'm just a little bit shocked by is with the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's a lot of talk about that. But how about how do you prepare? Well, right? I, yeah, I think, I think a big issue is... Um, Many people know 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Mm -hmm. Like, especially where I was, I was in the Midwest. I mean, I feel like 80% there is a Christ, born again Christian. Yeah. And uh, everyone knows this verse here that we will all be taken up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Exactly. And it says in this verse, uh, yeah, we who are alive and remain, we will all be taken up. So I think many just have that verse in mind and then you think, okay, we're going to be fine. What else is there to do? Right. And here's the problem. On, if I go to Spotify, if I go to YouTube, everybody, every pastor talks about the whole church will be raptured yeah. to heaven. And when Jesus comes again, we will all go to heaven. So it seems like the only criterion is you just need to be safe. You need to go to church. And just before the coming of the great tribulation or the great day of God's wrath, the whole church gets taken to heaven. Yeah, this, this actually made me think lately when we were visiting some other Christians in Switzerland. Yeah. We had a meeting and I was thinking, which verse in the Bible we can show to them to make clear we need to prepare? Mm -hmm. Because 1 Thessalonians 4.17 wouldn't help for that. Right. And then I came across 2 Peter 3.11 and that really convinced me that everyone should really know we need to prepare. And what does it say there? It says the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night mm -hmm. that we know. And yeah. it will cause the whole earth and the works on it to be burned. Right. It's going to be really serious what's about to come. And then it says in verse 11, and that's why I really like this. It says, therefore, because the Lord is coming, since all these things will be dissolved, and then he does not say, so you just need to be a Christian. But he said, what manner of persons you have to be in holy living 
and godliness. Mm -hmm. And that to me was such a proof. You cannot just be remaining at a point, I'm a Christian, I'm really born again. Right. But it says you have to have a holy living and godliness. And I know for my life that did not come overnight. <laughs> and I still see today, I still have a lot to work on this. So that really showed me we need to prepare for the coming of Christ. I right. mean, and you I, know, with this verse that you just talked about, right. growing up as a young Christian, I've always in my concept was, okay, I just need to be a good person and then I'll go to heaven and everything will be fine. Right. But as you point out when you're reading this verse that we should have a holy conduct in and godliness, I would be asking the question, why? Why is that so important, right? And so for me, most of my life, what I saw in the, in the scripture is what God wrote in Revelation, right? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't like to read Revelation because Revelation is a quote, scary, scary book, book yeah. right? And it's a difficult book to understand. But you know, the most important point that God tells us that we need to understand, he writes in very simple, plain English. And he wrote it three times that we should become kings and priests to reign with Christ on this earth for a thousand years. Right. Nothing about heaven, <laughs> nothing about getting hearts at the pearly gates, but it says that we should be kings and priests right. to reign with Christ on the earth, on this earth, together with Jesus Christ. And for us to rule and reign, then that means we need to be qualified. Definitely. So exactly, like you said, to be holy in our conduct and to be godly. And then also, how do you prepare to become a king and a priest? Yeah, I don't know if you thought about that, but... You know, I've been thinking about, you know, for me, I'd be, I studied to be an engineer. I didn't study biology. I studied engineering. Right. But today, how many Christians are focused on preparing to become a king and a priest? Yeah. And then you don't hear this anywhere. And uh, so this is, this is a big concern. And, and this is, I think this is why it's good that we can start this podcast. Right. To talk in this way, because preparing for the Lord's return is really the ultimate goal that we should focus on. I mean, to see that, that you would meet the Lord and you're not prepared. Yeah. You cannot even meet a boss at your work and you're not prepared. Right. You exactly. cannot show up and say, okay, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> he will not be happy with that, right? Yeah. And when I read Second Peter, I also thought, and that's what you're mentioning in First Peter, it says exactly the same thing. It said that we Christians, we should be built up and to be built up that is not something that you can do overnight right i mean build up means there is training there is a progress mm -hmm. there is a growth yeah it's not coming overnight right and this is really so disturbing that you meet many times a christian he might be really born again he might have a heart for the lord mm -hmm. But there's not such awareness, hey, we got to grow right. to a certain goal. Yeah. We need to have a real progress in our Christian life. It cannot just be God is for me and that's it. Right, exactly. And, and what he says here, Peter, he says, you are a royal and a holy priesthood. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you should offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And especially his point here, it says again, a holy priesthood. Even the priesthood in the Old Testament times, they need training. Yeah. And uh, I think really this is what Peter has in mind when he t speaks about a holy conduct. It means we should be a holy priesthood. Right. And uh, I don't know what I've seen in churches today. It's more about coming, listening and singing and then putting your money down and then that's it. Right. Yeah. But. A holy priesthood where everyone serves God in a holy way. I think that is something that really still needs to be built up. Right, so. and this is not uh, the priesthood that we have in the Catholic Church. Oh yeah, no. We All should. those strange that guys is who wears this awful, little jacket with awful. the white little thing in the center here. No, this is not the priesthood we're talking about, right? We're no. talking about something very different and something very much what is on God's heart. And uh, this is important. We need to find out and we need to get this message out. Yeah, I, th I think really the, the key point is that everyone who's born again has to realize Christ is coming soon. Yeah. And we have to prepare with all we have. Because exactly. we need to be holy in our living 
and we should be serving him as a holy priesthood and that cannot come overnight right. so um and part of the reason why i'm here in stuttgart is because we had this conference exactly. the spring conference we just finished yeah it's titled uh, god's unchanging plan right that we would become kings and priests and so i would encourage all of our listeners to go out and check out this conference we have all of the conference podcasts available to you on the website and a number of our platforms and our apps um, download it and uh, check it out and see but there is so much more to preparing for the lord's coming it's yeah. not just that we're gonna he comes and we go up to heaven with him no but we need to prepare definitely right? and i think in amos it says prepare to meet your god right and so today we want to prepare right and, uh, that's why you even flew over the ocean right <laughs> no it, that's really what is all on our heart Right. That we all understand Christ is coming. There's so many who talk about it, but there are not so many, or very few at least, I haven't heard of many, who really make clear you need to get ready. Yeah. And this last conference was such a great help to hear based on God's word. Mm -hmm. We need to get ready. And that's what we really want to continue to talk about to stir us all up, to prepare and meet the Lord in a holy way as he wants us to see right because we don't want to be put to shame when yeah. christ comes and so we hope you keep following and we'll get more into that how to prepare in the next session exactly that's our main focus what we want to do on this podcast is to bring awareness that we all would have a change in our mindset that we would prepare for our god's coming for we would prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ, our King, and that we could be qualified to rule and reign together with him and that we would all make it. So, absolutely. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. More is coming and uh, we'll talk to you soon.